My father was a superstitious man. When I was growing up, he hung wind chimes so they surrounded the outside of our home. There were wind chimes in the strangest places. Some hung from hooks fixed to the windowsills outside the bedroom that I shared with my younger sister Isabella. Others swung from a post in the backyard. On our small front porch, wind chimes of all sizes and colors partly obscured the view of the street. When the wind chimes rang, my father would usher Isabella and I into a closet in our house. We were never to leave until he retrieved us or if we were alone. When the airy jingling of the chimes had settled into silence, as a small child, I accepted my father's instructions without thought. As the years went on, I questioned why Isabella and I followed these strange rules. Even if Isabella and I were outside, we had to return home immediately when the chimes rang. This meant I could never play outside with my friends in the neighborhood on windy days and I resented it. One day, I asked him why we had to hide when the wind chimes rang. It's because of Willie Windchime, my father muttered, without further explanation. Unsatisfied, I complained to my mother. I told her how embarrassing it was to have to leave my friends whenever I heard the stupid sound of wind chimes. My mother explained that my father's rules were a cultural difference. My parents had immigrated from Latin America, and my father brought some traditions and superstitions with him. My mother reminded me to never be ashamed of this, and said it was better that I followed my father's rules. One Saturday morning, when I was 11, my sister and I were watching cartoons when the wind chimes began to ring. We knew the protocol, and entered the closet without our father asking. The closet was dark and cramped, filled with mountains of old clothing. While hiding, Isabella and I always tried to find ways to pass the time. We would play games like chopsticks and rock, paper, scissors. This time, we decided to play dress up. While digging through shoeboxes in the back of the closet, I listened to the sounds filtering in from outside. In addition to the ringing of the chimes, I heard the faint rush of footsteps in the street. The window must have been open. I imagined neighborhood kids playing tag or hopscotch outside, all while Isabella and I wasted our Saturday in a closet. I noticed a small wooden box near the back of a shelf. It was unassuming, the wood warped and dust covered. Thinking that it must be a jewelry box, I took it from the shelf and I removed its lid. It was empty save for a single Polaroid, which sat face down. I noticed words written in faded ink next to one of its frayed corners. Esteban, 1967 The sounds of the wind chimes clanging against each other grew more intense as I reached inside the box. I slowly turned the old Polaroid over, careful not to tear it. The photo was of a boy about my age, wearing a school uniform and sitting on a stoop. His brown skin and infectious smile, twinkle in his eyes, reminded me of my father's. It couldn't have been my father, though. 
His name was not Esteban. I pocketed the Polaroid and waited with Isabella for the chimes to stop ringing. A few minutes later, my father told us it was okay to come back out. Papa, I asked, who's the boy in this picture? I produced the Polaroid I had found in the closet. My father flinched upon seeing the photo. He was such a strong, stoic man, and until then, I had never seen such pain in his eyes. He snatched the photo from my hand. Anna Maria, he barked, pointing a finger in my face. It is wrong to snoop through other people's possessions. I raised you better than that. What else am I supposed to do when you lock me in a closet? I shot back. It's not fair. I want to go outside. Years of frustration with my father's rules boiled over and escaped in the form of the hot tears which streamed down my cheeks. My father glanced at the Polaroid again, and his face softened. He knelt in front of me and took my hands. My hia, he said, I know you do not understand, but you must promise me that you will follow the rules. When you hear the wind chimes, you and Isabella must remain in the closet, together. I promised him that I would. He turned away and retreated to the bedroom. He paused for a moment by the window, casting a longing glance into the street. I broke my promise a few days later. Isabella and I had taken the bus home after school and would be alone until our parents returned from work. I was doing a school assignment when the wind chimes outside broke out into a chorus of rings. My reflex was to grab Isabella and enter the closet as I had been taught to do. But as we waited in the closet, the ringing continued with no sign of stopping. Feelings of defiance stirred inside of me. Why should I follow this dumb rule? It's just the wind. The ringing escalated. Dozens of wind chimes combining into one eerie, discordant tone. Listening closely, I thought I heard footsteps. I imagined that the neighborhood kids were outside, playing together gleefully. I put my hand on the doorknob and began to turn. Anna Maria, Isabella protested. We're supposed to wait. I'll be back soon, I said. Stay here. I flung the closet doors open and made my way to the front door. The chimes clashed against each other now, as if in the midst of some turbulent storm. As far as I could tell, the weather outside was calm. The footsteps were clearly audible, but sounded different. Before, I could have sworn I had heard the irregular pitter-patter of children playing. But now they took on the steady cadence of a military march. I opened the front door and stepped out onto the porch. A single file line of children stretched as far down the street as I could see. They trudged past the house, their eyes fixed ahead of them as if in a trance. The chimes on our porch beat against each other with electric fury. A few houses scattered along the street had a single wind chimes outside, and they rang too. There was no breeze in the air. Some of the children wore clothing like mine. Others wore outfits that looked old or foreign. At the head of the strange parade, 
stood the only adult in sight. A tall figure. He wore colorful, patterned clothing that reminded me of a court jester's costume. Atop his head sat a similarly patterned top hat from which wisps of stringy hair flowed. I knew that this was the person my father once mentioned. The reason my sister and I had to hide in the closet. Willie Winsheim. He turned towards me and grinned. A voice in the back of my head told me I had made a mistake. That I should go back inside and into the closet and wait. But something... Something drowned that voice out. A sort of pull I felt towards Willie Winchime's parade. Something about Willie felt warm and inviting. And besides, what could I want more than so many new friends? The parade stopped, awaiting my entrance into its ranks. Stepping closer to the line of children... My gaze fell upon the boy in his school uniform. Though he faced the front of the line and no longer smiled, there was no doubt it was the boy from the Polaroid. His head snapped to the right, facing me. He opened his mouth, pausing for a second, as if struggling to speak to me. The only sounds which escaped him with a high-pitched ring of wind chimes. Without warning, a hand covered my eyes from behind me. I felt myself yanked backwards, my sneakers dragging along the pavement. Whoever had grabbed me had adult strength. I imagined Willie Windchime behind me, and I snapped out of whatever haze had come over me. I was too late, I thought. I was being carried to the back of that unending line of kids, and I knew once I walked with it, I would walk with it forever. I felt myself carried up the flight of steps, and I heard louder the tinkle of dozens of wind chimes. I realized I was being carried up the front steps of my house. The man who hauled me away was not Willie Winchime after all. He was my father. My father rushed me wordlessly into the closet where Isabella still was and slammed the door. He let us out only after the chimes had stopped ringing. That night, my father sat me down to have a talk. He said that it was time I knew the truth. When my father was growing up, there was a folktale passed down in his neighborhood about a strange man who stole children. According to the folktale, when chimes rang when the man passed by, even on calm days, every house in the neighborhood hung wind chimes to warn children when he was coming. The kids were expected to stay inside when the chimes rang. My father had a brother he had never told Isabella and I about. His name was Esteban. Papa cried when he spoke his name. Esteban was one year older than he and his best friend. Esteban was a good-hearted kid, but he had a mind of his own. One day, when my father and his brother were playing outside, the chimes began to sound. Esteban was sick of having to return home when the wind chimes rang. He decided he would prove to everyone that he could stay outside, and the strange man's parade would pass him by. If he could do that... The local kids would never be forced to hide again. My father begged Esteban to come inside, but Esteban didn't budge. My father ran home to hide, praying that the man would not take his brother. 
Esteban never returned. Years later, my father had two kids of his own. He pledged that we would never suffer the same fate as Esteban. Whenever the wind chimes rang, he hid Isabella and I away and waited by the window. He watched with sadness as Willie Windchime's parade passed by, the only way to see his brother again. He made me swear that until Isabella and I were both old enough, that we would hide at the first sound of Windchime's together. This time, I kept my promise. Years have passed and I am my own son. His name is Esteban in honor of my uncle. When I hear the many wind chimes outside begin to ring, I shepherd him into the closet. He stays there until all is quiet again. If you ever hear wind chimes on a windless day, hide your children.